The first people to go to Mars are going to have to go through a training program unlike any that has come before. Passing the astronaut selection is just the beginning. Can you survive the training? <laughs> Gone are the days where flight simulator hours and physical prowess determined who was most suitable for space missions. Nowadays, it's quite often more about aptitude for science, engineering and mathematics. But in addition to these, an entirely different kind of mentality is required for long duration spaceflight. Indeed, psychological considerations are perhaps one of the most important things to take into account when planning for Mars missions. With all of these additional things to take into account, Mars One is going to train its astronauts for at least eight years before they depart, which compares to a typical length of between three and five years for the space agencies. Now, eight years sounds like a lot, but there's a huge amount to get through in that time. The training programme will be split into three areas, technical training, personal training, and group training. On the technical side, each of the trainee astronauts must become proficient in a wide array of different disciplines regardless of their previous experience and expertise. First and foremost, each of the astronauts must understand in and out the detailed technical specifications of every structure and component that comprises the settlement, as well as how to repair and maintain all of them. Equally important is hydroponic agriculture, being able to grow your own food supply, as the settlement can't function without food. And thirdly, and also really important, is medical training, such as dental upkeep and being able to deal with muscle tears and bone fractures. Now the training astronauts will get to choose their areas of speciality, but it's going to be subject to the constraints that in each group of four, at least two have the necessary engineering knowledge and at least two receive extensive medical training. And in addition to the vital skills, there'll also be at least one person receiving training in hydroponics, exobiology, and geology. And there'll be a number of other specialities split between the remaining four people and scattered about, such as physiotherapy, psychology, and electronics, to name a few. So that's very similar to current astronaut training programmes, but for seven month journeys with only four people, the importance of personal training cannot be overstressed. The astronauts must be able to learn how to cope with reduced mobility, no longer being able to communicate face to face with their friends and families back on Earth and how to deal with potential personal issues and conflicts as they arise throughout the journey and eventually on Mars. Now that's not to say that help won't be on hand of course, as long range psychological correspondence with experts on Earth will be available if needed. But particularly for the first crew selected to go to Mars, the personal training will focus on refining and enhancing their inherent ability to cope with such environments and deal with them effectively. The final aspect of the training programme is the group training. This will primarily take the form of simulation missions carried out in replicas of the Mars outpost here on Earth. Initially after the selection process finishes, this will be full immersion, three month long simulations carried out by each of the groups of four candidates training for the mission, and it will happen at least once every year. During these simulations, the astronauts will have to maintain their own water supply keep the life support systems functioning, and also only leave the Mars outpost wearing their Mars pressure suits. In addition, they're also going to have to grow their own food supply and suffer from an artificial communication delay of 20 minutes to simulate the distance of Mars to Earth. As the training program advances, further simulation outposts will be constructed in progressively harsher environments, ranging from the arid deserts of the Atacama to the frozen wastelands of the Arctic, and Antarctica. Ultimately, every attempt will be made to try and break the astronaut's resolve by simulating anything that could go wrong and at the most inconvenient of times. The toilets will break. The CO2 levels will unexpectedly peak. The lights will dim and electricity levels will sharply drop without warning. Mind games will be played time and time again because ultimately we want to make sure that those people that can cope with each and every hurdle that gets thrown at them will find Mars a paradise in comparison. But hey, you signed up to go to Mars. Who said it was going to be easy? So thanks for watching. 
Do you have any suggestions for training or skills that the Mars One astronaut should acquire? Post them in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for all the latest news and analysis on the Mars One mission. See you soon.